Hello, Spuds. Ms. Fontaine here again. And today our lesson is going to be on a tiramisu. Uh, this is a, tiramisu is kind of a classic Italian dessert. We're gonna do a little bit of modification because we wanna be able to make it quickly. So this is kind of a make-ahead tiramisu and it's pretty simple. Um, one of the things I know I need is some coffee. So if you save some coffee from the morning or you make some fresh, you might wanna start doing that because that takes a few minutes. I just use a Keurig, so it goes pretty quick. And I put my coffee directly into my measuring cup. And then no matter what setting I have, I can adjust it and see and make sure I got exactly the eight ounces that I need. In my mixing bowl, I have 16 ounces of cream cheese. It's been softened. And I have my two thirds of a cup of sugar. So I'm gonna get this going. And this just, you wanna uh, beat this like crazy until it's nice and smooth. start with just a kind of at a lower setting until I can see things kind of start to get incorporated in. Once it starts to get incorporated, I can go ahead and turn the speed up just a little bit. And I kind of gradually increase it and work until smooth. So I don't want to see any kind of lumps of cream cheese at all. And this is why it's really, really important to have softened cream cheese if your cream cheese is not softened it will have it's going to take a lot longer to get this going and you'll have kind of little lumps of cream cheese in there and that's not what we're wanting to have so i'm going to turn it up a little bit more and that'll start to kind of fling some of the stuff off the beaters it's kind of a good thing because these mixers have a tendency to just kind of push it to the edge of the bowl so and then same with the beater every so often i want to turn it off and scrape your sides down because again, these mixers kind of push things towards the edge and make sure you get that in the center of your mixer too. Otherwise you're gonna end up with like this weird clump of cream cheese in the end. And I'm also gonna get some of this stuff off of this paddle attachment. And then we're just gonna keep doing this until it gets nice and smooth. All right. So my cream cheese and sugar mixture is nice and smooth. Now I'm going to start adding my other ingredients. I have a quarter cup of milk. Again, I used a liquid measuring cup, set it on the counter, poured the milk, and did that at eye level. For my sour cream, I'm going to use a dry measuring cup. And I'm going to mix this around just a little bit. Sometimes there's a little liquid there at the top. Kind of give that a stir. And again, with sour cream, dry measuring cup and a spatula is what you need. So I'm going to take my sour cream and put it into my dry measuring cup. I am not dunking my measuring cup in the sour cream. You end up with more on the outside than you do the actual inside of the measuring cup. So make sure that's nice and level. And that's why I'm using a dry measuring cup too. So I can make sure I level it off. It's really hard to level on a liquid measuring cup. And I do need two cups of this. So I need that spatula anyway to get the sour cream out of here. in here. And then I also need to add um, half a teaspoon of vanilla. Make sure I get all the sour cream out of here. A lot of pain. Half a teaspoon of vanilla. And then after we get this all mixed in, all we do is start layering. So this can go pretty quick. The biggest thing is making sure that you thaw out your cream cheese before you get started. Not really thaw it out, but let it soften. back on with the mixer and let that get started I'll stop it again kind of do that bowl scrape it's a pretty common thing to do anytime you're making anything you want to make sure everything is evenly incorporated you don't have a big clump of something in the middle because if you were to get just a big bite of cream cheese or a big bite of sour cream and not any of the other stuff in here it kind of 
throws the taste of your dish off just a little bit. And this kind of cream mixture, I mean, there's lots of different versions of tiramisu that some use the cream cheese, some use more of a mascarpone cheese. There's a lot of different variations to this. It's just kind of a quick and simple one, mostly because we're kind of constrained with how long class is. Try to get this done pretty quick. And that's looking pretty good. So we're gonna put this aside, get our paddle off of there. And now we can start layering our dessert. So I have an 11 by seven pan and it's kind of a weird shape. It may not, you know, nine by 13 is a little bit bigger and that's kind of what a lot of you probably use for a cake pan or something like that. So this one's a little bit smaller. Um, you may probably don't have this specific size. And so your layer is just gonna look a little bit different. Um, you're going to take your lady fingers and you need to split them. I bought these at Safeway and they actually come pre-split, which is really nice. Saves you some time. But if they're not split already, so like these, they're pre-split. You got the two sides to them. If they're not pre-split, you'll want to take them out. Probably get a bread knife and slice through them so that they're split. Uh, and then depending on the size of pan too, these fit really nice for two packages, but different pans are gonna be a little bit different. So I'm just gonna brush on some of this coffee mixture or this coffee, there's no mixture in this because the only other thing you would put on there would be some uh, coffee liqueur, which obviously for school purposes, we are not going to use that. And it might seem like a lot on here, but that's kind of where a lot of your tiramisu gets the flavor is these lady fingers absorbing that coffee flavor. There's a lot of recipes that might have you uh, kind of soak your lady fingers for a long time before you use them. So everyone's just a little bit different. I want to make sure this gets all over these things and I'm going to use about half of this. So I had one cup, so I want to make sure I'm using all the way down to about that half cup line. Getting pretty close. And if there's a little bit in the bottom of the pan, no problem. It's just extra good flavor for this. Edge is really good. Nice thing too is, you know, these things absorb the coffee pretty quick. So you can kind of tell where you're kind of light on that coffee and where you need to add just a little bit more. You can try pouring it on there, but probably not going to work so good. And we're right out of half a cup. So now I'm going to take about half of this mixture here, scrape this paddle off of here. I'm going to put about half the mixture on top of this. And we're just doing two layers. So a layer of lady fingers with the coffee, and then a layer of your cream, and then another layer of lady fingers. So we're going to put about half of this on here. And you're just going to kind of eyeball it. Should be able to cover in a nice layer. Just gonna smear that around. Try to be as even as possible across your pan. And then now we're gonna repeat with another layer of lady fingers that are split. I do end up with about half a package left over, but I really just want one layer. And if you wanted to, you could slide these out and throw a little layer here in the middle. It's kind of too late for that now for me. So if this works. I can use these for something else a little bit later on. Now the rest of my coffee mixture. The nice thing about this, it doesn't have to bake or anything. It just needs to go in the fridge and sit for a couple of hours. So this is something you, you know, plan ahead a little bit if you're wanting this for after dinner dessert. 
make sure you, you make it early enough that it will have set up nicely in the fridge before you're ready to eat it. But, you know, it may seem like you don't need all the coffee, mix, all the coffee, but make sure you do use it all because these lady fingers really do soak up a lot of um, liquids. And that's partly what, again, that's what's given this dish so much flavor is the coffee. Otherwise it just tastes sweet from that cream mixture and you don't get kind of need a little bit of that coffee for some of the bitterness. And then we finish it off with the rest of our mixture. And then after it sets for a little bit, we're gonna dust it with some cocoa powder. So I'm not terribly concerned how nice, like frosted, if you will, that this looks. I just kind of want to smooth it all out, make sure I get my edges. And then we'll use some unsweetened cocoa powder to kind of cover up anything on here that maybe doesn't look as pretty as what you like. That's the beauty of some of these ingredients is they help hide some of the things that don't look quite the way you would like them to. Make sure I get all my corners. I'm just gonna come across like this. And then this is gonna go in the fridge for a couple hours and right before we serve it, we are going to dust it with some cocoa powder. All right, so my tiramisu is chilled for about four hours. I'm gonna take some cocoa powder and I just have a small sifter. So I just need a tablespoon of cocoa powder. Put that in here. And I'm just gonna gently tap it a little bit of height on it to cover the top. If you do this too soon, it'll start to kind of soak in and it won't look nearly as pretty. So this is kind of one of those little things you can do, make it look nice and pretty. And you don't want to get too much on there because it is that unsweetened cocoa powder. But there we go. I didn't use all of it. I'm just gonna throw it back. Looks pretty good to me. So there you go, Spuds. There is your no um, make ahead tiramisu. Enjoy.